Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. Welcome to our last sketch in our series covering vasoactive agents. First, we met Johnny Nitro, who showed us how nitrates use cyclic GMP to dilate veins. Afterwards, we watched as sumatriptan sumo wrestlers reenacted how activation of the serotonin receptor causes arterial constriction. For our last sketch, we're going to focus on activation of the prostaglandin receptor, an important mediator of smooth muscle contraction. The last time we encountered the prostaglandins, we were at the NSAID baseball diamond, where we illustrated how cyclooxygenase enzymes COX-1 and COX-2 convert arachidonic acid into prostaglandins that mediate the inflammation process. Well, head coach COX-1 and his assistant coach COX-2 are back. Don't get too excited though. In this sketch, they're going to stay in the background because instead of augmenting the activity of the COX enzymes, we're going to take advantage of a few of their prostanoid products. Take a look at the display next to them. Yep, it's a recurring symbol for prostaglandins, the pro-slugger bat. Numerous prostaglandin subtypes are endogenously produced by COX synthesis pathways. In the back of this pro-slugger sporting goods store, however, we're going to illustrate a few important clinical scenarios when these prostaglandins could be administered pharmacologically, resulting in some major effects on the smooth muscle of vasculature, GI, and reproductive tracts. So while Coach Cox is predisposed at the front of the store, you know how he gets, always demanding 110%, even from random employees of the sporting goods department, let's turn our attention to a few kids getting a little out of hand with those pro-slugger prostaglandin bats. Over at the extreme sports section, we've highlighted the letter E because we're going to illustrate a few agents related to E prostaglandins. First up, alprostadil, also called PGE1. Let the dill in alprostadil remind you of this dill pickle themed board. And let this dill pickle themed board remind you of erectile dysfunction therapy. Why? Because alprostadil injections are a second-line treatment available for erectile dysfunction alone or in combination with other agents. So just remember that it raises that dill pickle up in the air, kind of like that erect pro-slugger bat he's holding. The reason why it's so effective is because PGE1 is a vasodilator, exerting potent smooth muscle relaxant effects. To highlight this, our alprostadil skateboarder is sporting a floppy, dilated red arterial hoodie. Because of this potent vasodilatory effect, alprostadil is also used to maintain the patency of the fetal ductus arteriosus. So we've made him knocking that air ductus open with his pro-slugger bat. You see, the fetal ductus arteriosus normally depends on COX-2-derived PGE2 to act locally on vasodilatory prostaglandin receptors. At birth, PGE2 levels decline, allowing the ductus arteriosus to close. In certain types of congenital heart disease, however, it's important to maintain the patency of the neonate's ductus arteriosus until corrective surgery. That's where PGE1, or alprostadil, comes in. Like PGE2, PGE1 is a vasodilator and inhibitor of platelet aggregation, and can be administered by continuous infusion to keep that ductus open. 